So the lighting is here is interesting, but I, I really just wanted to step in and like, I've had a delightful day. I'm in Stratford. I um, I drew up some friends to King Lear, which I watched earlier in the season, and I'm just in the park across, and it is so wonderful to look at it because like, I know that King Lear is happening, I know that musicals happen there all the time, and it is like a fancy building, but you can't hear anything. I think that's sometimes magical to think about the fact that like something super beautiful or wonderful to be happening, and from the outside, it just looks so quiet, and sometimes it's like humans too, where we have like so much going on, but like outside, it's just a building that's like a little pretty. And yeah, I went to my favorite store ever, which is the Stratford Goodwill. This is my favorite store because it has like impeccable taste. I always get classics, I always get beautiful books. Like I cut myself off because I wanted to buy so many more books that I didn't get. But I got two books that I don't have with me that I left in the car. And that is Anxious People, which I've already read, and Emily Climbs, which is the second or third book in the Emily of New Boon series. And it is like my favorite editions of those books. And I literally kind of squealed like in my head but squealed when i saw it because i just i'm obsessed with those versions and then i also saw the professor and this is by charlotte bronte this is one of her books and i didn't realize like how small it is it's only like 200 pages so yeah i'm really obsessed with the fact that i found it this is like my favorite editions of classics i just like i love annotating them and they're like they're pretty on the outside they're pretty on the inside and then I got The Edible Woman. I was also really excited because I got my first Margaret Atwood book in this kind of version, which is Dancing Girls, a collection of short stories that I still haven't read. And this is a book from 1969, and I'm actually not fully sure of the plot, but I did read the first like five, six pages, and I love it. Like, it's just, um, I feel like if someone likes that kind of like messy, messy woman books, um, you would love that. And I find that like the 1960s has a lot of those books. Like um, today I went mad in the supermarket and like several of the other books that are just like that era. Like I think 1960s is just such an interesting time in women's fiction. This does not fit for any of my prompts in October, but like I did not want to stop. I was like immensely engrossed just from the beginning. I actually, I'll read like the first, like the first line. There are geese in the background, so I'm sorry if that's loud. I'm also not talking as loud as I sometimes do because I'm in public. There's children playing over there, etc. I love it because it's a simple line. I know I was all right on Friday when I got up. If anything, I was feeling more stolid than usual. But like, you know the fact that something eerie is about to happen because of the fact that like it says I was all right on Friday, like when I got up. So what happened? what happens by the end of Friday, like what's happening. And I do feel like it's about like women and their place and about how they're like made to be consumable by men. I think that that is kind of part of the understanding of that, but I only read five pages and it's just, it's intoxicating. And then I also have Aurora Lee here. This is a book that I already know, own, that I am reading for October. So I didn't actually open it. And I have Western Lane that is propping up my phone. I also read a few pages of that and also really enticed. I feel like I'm in such a classics mood that I'm so excited for that book, but I'm just like not able to like get into it at the moment. Like I just, I love classic books so much. And there's just like a way of writing in the ways that classics write that is like different than modern fiction. And it's not better, but like it's often what I want, you know? So the other book that I got that I'm super excited to share is Miss Maple's Complete Short Stories. I, this is Agatha Christie obviously, and I really love her books. I read 12 Agatha Christie books as well as some of her short stories for um, Parker Pine ones. But these, like Agatha Christie, pretty much without exception, Miss Marple's books are the ones that have been the most successful for me. I really, really love her books and I, I feel kind of enmeshed in them. And a lot of them happen in like the 1950s, 60s. And I feel like there's, there's that era that I really love and, you know, spooky kind of, you know, murder mystery stuff. I didn't really like The Murder at the Vicarage, which is the first Miss Marple book she published in 1930. But like, I just kind of discount that considering the fact that like Miss Marple is not at all pretty much identifiable as that character. There's so many traits that just aren't like her older version. You know, Agatha Christie was still quite young when she wrote that. When she wrote most of her books, she was kind of an older woman, just like Agatha Christie was older. Miss Marple is this older lady and they're just so funny and so great. And like, yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I don't have like necessarily room on my TBR to be reading Agatha Christie, but I feel like I can like, you know, read a story or whatever. Like, I don't know, who knows what I'll do, but I by her friend Dolly Bantry is the typical old maid of fiction. Miss Marple has lived almost her entire life in the sleepy hamlet of St. Mary Mead. By observing village life, she gained an unparalleled insight into human nature and uses it to devastating effect. As her friend Sir Henry Clithering, the ex-commissioner of Scotland Yard, has been heard to say, 
She's just the finest detective God ever made, and Agatha Christie fans are abound to agree. <sighs> She's just my woman, you know? So yeah, I, I've been feeling like I wanted to read Agatha Christie, and I saw that, and I, I was I was delighted with my full heart. I will also do like a general kind of update on what my reading has been done for October. I have started The Diary of a Nobody. This is a book that like is not at all <laughs> what I had on my TBR, but it is a Victorian book kind of satirizing by not satirizing the ways of just the common class, like lower middle class life and stuff like that. And yeah, it's literally just The Diary of a Nobody. Uh, these two brothers started writing it for a newspaper and then it became a book. and. I don't think anything actually ever happens and that's kind of the point like people in fiction are always dramatic there's always like big things and i do just love flawless books i love character driven funny books and yeah this is about his man and his wife he has a lot of feelings about a lot of things you know his son comes back and you know you know is drinking rather than going to the bank and like you know he's like how do i get him a future and he wants to be called lupin instead of william <laughs> there's just like all of these things that are like great and like i don't think that i'm gonna love it as much as i thought that i was like maybe going to love it but i think it's definitely gonna be like a solid like three and a half three point seven five like i have about an hour left of the audiobook and then i am just overjoyed this is not victorian at all but I love Fantastic Classics is run by Julia Taylor and Kara and they just go through and each month they choose a book that none of them have read or only like one of them has read or whatever and and they read it and they discuss it and like there are a lot of the books that are like the past it you know what I mean like the book the classic books that you're supposed to have read but you never read and some of them are like super popular some of them aren't as popular but you know it's it's a loving classic fiction and they have a live show at the end of each time and it's just so delightful even a lot of the books I, I love joining in on the live shows of the books I haven't even read because I just enjoy them talking and discussing and like they're just really intelligent really funny humans that like you know have a good time and are friends and yeah it's just it just makes me happy so I have had a room with a view on my like to reach out for a long time and I was like I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it I'm gonna read it and then I got home from church on Sunday afternoon and I was like oh no I have an hour and a half until the live show I don't want to be spoiled for this one so I did like listen to it all and then like ended up talking to people and whatever I didn't I missed the live show so I'm, I'm re-watching it but I you know went back and listened to, to it in all of the things but it was just also so delightful because I'm now hearing them talk about it even if it's not live and they're just so wonderful and like I do think that like it is just gonna be one of my favorite books like sometimes you want to put a book five stars and I was like no I'll put it four stars because it's like not you know so so wonderful but I was like no like I really do love it and I moved up to five and it's it's set in 1908 and it's it the room with a view is this like this girl who's a young woman late teens early 20s kind of era and then she's with her cousin who's like you know an older maid who's like you know doesn't have as much of a life and is a little strict and they're just in Italy doing life and they meet this couple of people that are socialists and all of that and uh, you know they're like yeah no 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 you can have a view like you like beauty and it's just them in Italy and then the second part takes takes place in England and it's very character driven there's a lot of like comic characters if you like like Jane Austen or you, you like those ones that have like people that are so over the top that you're like laughing at them when they're also like oh no you're terrible there's a little bit of that and social critique and humor and just wonderful wonderful narration like it's some of the best narration I've ever had and it's like looking at you know the the restraint of England versus like the passion of Italy and like the ways in which and why we use the social mores that we do I really just fell in love with the story with the writing I I wanted to like pause every second so that I could like write down quotes like I had the intention of like hurrying through it so I could get to the live show before it ended and I was like no like I need to just savor this it's so beautiful so yeah I haven't done a ton of Victorian kind of things but I am enjoying it and I'm just I'm having such a wonderful time enjoying fiction in September I made a video kind of about stepping back from booktube because that was my intention at the time I was nannying and I was just so worn down like physically and emotionally and just how much pain I was in and okay I'm just like looking over there and there's just like leaves falling from trees and it's beautiful and even though like my birthday passed I just like even that week like you know it was my birthday it's supposed to be exciting and like I had people come visit me and I was just like I fell asleep in the middle of the day I was like I'm I'm so dead tired the girl that I was knitting um had like a lot of attachment things she's like very attached to her mother and otherwise we'll get like really really upset so we figured that we were hoping that her being at home with someone would be like a good way to like 
you know, have that. But she was like, no, she's just so upset, like all of the time. Then maybe having her in daycare where she's like in a different environment might actually allow her to, to calm down because there's nothing, there's nothing happening that's bad. It's just that, you know, babies, you know, are attached to their mothers and sometimes find it very overwhelming to not be with their mothers. But it's hard when, you know, the mom wants to go back to work and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was, it was a good experience. I like working with children, but it was also like realized like just how much it takes for me, like as someone with chronic health to, to be standing. And I, I felt encouraged because I sometimes am very hard on myself and I feel very, sometimes I'm very hard on myself and sometimes I feel very angry at myself for my limitations. And sometimes I need this where I'm like just so pushed past my limits to like realize that I'm allowed to put limits on my life and that doesn't make me lesser. So yeah, not having the stress of working when also kind of accepting that like, yes, I was pushing myself too much, allows myself to enjoy reading and to like actually to dive into that reading again. And yeah, I'm just so excited for fall. I'm not excited for winter because, you know, the winter is cold. It's beautiful, but it's so cold and like your bones just ache in winter time. So I'm so thankful that we're getting like a beautiful, you know, kind of fake summer at the end of fall. Like it's 28 degrees. It's beautiful and lovely. You know, I've got fall leaves all around me and yeah, I, I know that it's going to be cozy and wonderful. And yeah, I just hope this month is a beautiful month, no matter what I read. And I will take you along with me. I literally stopped here because I was like, I am going to take pictures in the beautiful, beautiful fall leaves. 